Hello, uh, good morning, good evening, and good night from wherever in the world you are. Uh, thank you all for joining us today uh, in this wonderful session from the Fab Lab uh, Asia Network. Uh, last week, we had an amazing um, group of panelists from uh, the African Network where we uh, discussed diversity, education, and more topics related to this uh, current situation that is happening worldwide and how can we move forward in those topics. Uh, this week, uh, we will be uh, joining with the Fab Lab Asia Network. Uh, Danny will be our moderator for this session. And I let's see what we have to, to hear from this incredible network, Danny. Danny, you're muted. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Okay. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Danny Chen, I'm from Taiwan. And today I'm very happy to uh, join this uh, discussion about the uh, Asia Network. And uh, I just uh, introduced myself first. Okay, and I'm Danny Chen, I come from Taiwan and I'm now uh, in the National Defense Medical Center to be a researcher and also a researcher in the 3D printer center in our hospital. And I used to be a uh, member of the uh, Bioacademy and the Tucket is uh, one of my teacher in the Bioacademy. Yeah, so I'm very happy to meet her. And meet him. And I also learned a lot uh, from the Fab Lab Taipei. And now I'm just in the uh, Fab Lab Taipei. And uh, the founder of the Fab Lab Taipei is uh, Tad Hong. And this is just my background. I just uh, joined the uh, uh, Bio Academy before, just in uh, 2016. And my uh, one of the teacher is uh, Taket in the Asia Network. And also the New Gushper and George Church is uh, the main teacher of the class. And now I just uh, uh, organized the OSMS. And OSMS is open source medical supply. And now it's uh, one of the NGO organization around the world. And I'm organizing the Taiwan network and also the HR network. So I'm happy to meet everyone. And I think that will be great to connect all the dots and to fight the COVID together. And just a uh, very short introduce about the COVID-19. And I think COVID-19 is a very huge uh, uh, pandemic uh, uh, around the world and there are several several cases around the world and each day have uh, several uh, people is suffering about this uh, disease so I think that is the time to uh, gather together and to fight this uh, virus and so I just today to introduce the guest uh, one is uh, Hong Ki is from Taiwan and he will share experience about the Open Lab Taipei and Fair Lab Taipei and also the network of the OSMS. And he will share uh, in Chinese and I will be his uh, translator. So I will translate into English. And another one is Jap Japan's uh, Taket. And Taket is one of my teacher in the Bao Academy and he's doing a very good job in uh, the Japan and the Fair Lab Japan network. And he, he will share experience about how to uh, do the PPE to help other uh, hospital around the Japan. And the dream is from the Philippines and he will also share the experience about how to uh, do the project in the Philippines. And Nessarine is uh, from uh, Afghanistan and she's the, one of the important members of the OSMS. And she will share the connection of OSMS and other things that we can discuss and the connection with Taiwan and Afghanistan. Now we just send some uh, PPE to Afghanistan. And I think that in the future, we will keep a close connection together. And another one is a, a special guest. Uh, he's Joe. He's Joe. And uh, he will share some experience about the USA. Yeah. So this is my uh, today's uh, just introduce. So let me uh, welcome the first speaker is uh, Hong Ki. Okay, just uh, wait a minute for the honky.
I just wait a uh, one minute mm -hmm. <laughs> for his preparation. <laughs> Some technical technical issue. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. 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 And my background is about the technology, about the artist. Then I started a maker group, and I just set up the community as about the Open Lab Taipei. Now, it's been over 10 years in Taiwan, about the Open Lab Taipei. Then I was one of the biggest Open Lab Taipei. 然后我也是台湾一个最大的 开源基金，就是OpenSource，呃，一个开源基金会的董事，就是OCF。Yeah, and Hong Kong is also one of the director about the Open Culture Foundation. 然后现在就是呃，这是呃，注意呃，开源设计师是基于自己的兴趣，然后才关注这些东西。And Hong Kong is very interesting about the open source uh the a design, so it's just uh, in his interest and to do for these things. Yeah. And the job about the honky is about the maker and the education. 然后, uh, 因为, uh, 武汉肺炎的关系, and uh, this year, due to the COVID-19, so uh, Hong Kong set up uh, the Facebook group uh, with uh, me and Danny Chen, and we are about how to organize the uh, OSMS Taiwan and to discussion about the uh, open source medical supply in Taiwan. And using this platform and community, like we can connect the Taiwan and the world we can cooperation together, and there's a several plan that in Taiwan that we are doing. 对我来说，这个社团就是把有关于防疫的一些资讯集中在一个频道上面去交流跟分享。And as for Hong Kong, like you are using this a uh, a Facebook group is to co cooperate all the information that like to on this Facebook group, and that we can discuss. And there's a lot of information on the Facebook group. 然后也是透过这样的关系，我才发现到国内跟呃台湾跟国外的一些 open source 的计划，防疫的 open source 计划的差异点在哪里。And that is uh using this group that he will realize that what is the different uh between the Taiwan and the world, that what is the design different. 然后我先讲一下台湾的状况，台湾的一些呃防疫的开源。设计可以分成软体跟硬体两个部分 And in Taiwan, uh, uh, for the open source device, uh, design, there's uh, two parts The first part is about the hardware, and another part is about the software 然后软体其实是最快反应的 And the software is uh, the more the quickly and fast to uh, react 
爆发之后，就是有相关的物资，就是就会变得非常的紧急。Yeah, because about the COVID-19, that so there's a lot of supplies is very emergency. So that is very important for us in Taiwan. Yeah. 然后特别是我这边抓出来，呃，特别分享是有关于呃口罩地图这件事情。Okay, so in Taiwan, there's a um one of the issue is about the mask map. That in Taiwan is a software uh project. 然后一开始因为这个物资的缺乏，所以有民间有一个工程师，他他自己就写一个 APP。去去呈现这些相关的资讯，然后给一般的民众去使用。Yeah, because at the first, uh, there is some uh need, so there's an engineer just started to write some uh app about the mass map and to share. 然后因为他的资料，他的伺服器是用那马总，嗯，用那马总的的的伺服器去做，所以他。做了这个计划也背负了庞大的债务。Okay, uh, because he used the Amazon uh system, so he just uh have to borrow a lot of money to do for this project. 然后后来呃，台湾呃就是政委，就是我们的政委叫唐凤，他知道这件事情之后，他很快就是投入的呃协助这个口罩地图的计划，然后。透过他自己个人影响力，媒合民间跟政府的的力量，去把这个口罩地图做得更好。Okay, so Tang Feng, uh, he's uh, one of the very important uh people like in our Taiwan government, and he find this project, so he used his influence to uh make this project to push to around the Taiwan and to make a lot of uh member to join this project. 关于唐凤，你可以在各个呃。国内跟国外的媒体，如果看到有关于他的报道，那唐凤非常特别的一点是，他是他本这他真的是一个真正的工程师，而且是对于 open source 非常偏好的一个工程师。Okay, so during Tom he is uh very famous uh around the world, so you can see there's uh several information about the Tom Feng, and uh he's uh He's just an engineer, and he's now the very important that people in the government, and he's pushing this project. 那他的他个人的魅力以及影响力也塑造了台湾非常重要有关于开源文化的这件这个这个现象。Okay, so uh, use his uh influence that he just push the open source this culture in Taiwan and to make a lot of people to join this project. 当我还是学生时代的时候，哎，当我还是研究所研究生的时候，我也受了他的启发，然后对于开源文化的特别热爱跟。变成我的信仰。Yeah. So, uh, when Hong Kong is a student, that uh, Tang Feng is uh, one of the member that influence him to get into the open source this system and to influence him to uh, spend a lot of time in the open source this area. 所以有影响我对于后来的 Open Lab 台北的社群的成立以及呃 Fab Lab 台北的的一些开源事物的的注重。Okay, so that is his influence that make Hong Kong uh spend a lot of time, almost a ten years, uh focus on the Open Lab uh Taipei and the Fab Lab Taipei and a lot of project about the open source cases. 那我接下来我想要分享的是有关于特别硬体这一部分，因为软体其实能呃，这是在网络上都很好找到资料。可是特别是硬体这一块，我觉得在呃台湾或是国外很难看到台湾的一些作为。Okay, so another project is about uh Hongki want to share is about the hardware that he want to share because our software is a lot of people is doing, but hardware is more difficult to do. 那接下来我要想要讲是开源硬体，呃，在台湾的一些 maker 如何制作一些开源的开源硬体的呃开源的防疫的一些装置跟跟相关事物。And Hongki is going to share some open source hardware like in Taiwan. 然后。我会做这件事也其实也除了我自己的兴趣之外，其实也是也有一部分是来自于我近期的一个工作，就是呃有呃有另外一个工那个、呃、部门早上我希望我可以主持这样的的活动，去整理台湾的一些开源的防呃防疫的开源设计。Okay, so Hong Kong is is also one of his job to uh collect a lot of information about the open source uh cases for the COVID nineteen. 那我我觉得呃，有关于开源的
防疫的开源设计，基本上还是以呃在台湾这边。大多数还是以面罩跟口罩为主，还有消毒的相关的装置为主。Okay, so due for some regulation about the medical, that the in Taiwan open source project is focused on the mask and a face shield and some uh just uh to fight the COVID-19. Because the medical law is a very huge hurdle, it is very difficult to cross over. Because the regulation about the medical is a very big A issue that is a very difficult for some maker to overcome. 然后接下来我想要分享的这些开源设计，主要是他们有很明确的指出他们的授权模式。Okay, and he wants to share is uh the designer is okay for this cases for the sharing. 因为大部分的大部分的台湾的 maker 他们在做这些事情的时候，他们没有注重到呃授权的模式的说明。所以，呃，就很难会被造成它很难被扩散出去。Okay, uh, because uh in Taiwan's uh design, uh there is a lots of issue about the open source design. Uh, they regulate about the uh CC. Yeah, CC, CC. 嗯。然后就是其中一个就是他是现在是一个国中国中老师。This is a teacher, uh, a project from the teacher. 然后，然后他又说，这、呃、这个图片就是他的作品，他运用了不同的数位制造的技术去去去制作这个口罩。And uh, this is uh, his project. He used uh several uh digital fabrication to make this a mask. 然后他把这个放在放在他把这个档案所有所有的档案放在那个 Thingiverse 上面。And he he shared this design in the Thingiverse. 然后这是另外一个另外一个做的东西，就是镭射切割的那个面罩。And this is another project about the uh uh laser cutting facial facial. 因为当当初那时候在跟他讨论的时候，他是有一个有个想法，是说用三 D 打印其实速度还是有点慢，用镭切会比较快，所以他做就做了一个应该是镭射切割跟其他镭材复合的版本。Okay, the reason like why the at least teacher will do this project is because uh at the first the, there's a lot of maker use a 3D printer to make, but the time is uh spend a take a lot of time, so the laser cutter will be more faster. 然后再来是，然后这个是那个消呃那个口罩消毒器。Okay, and this is another is about the DIY UV light box manual. Technology. Yeah. 然后这是呃，接下来这这一这呃这件作品跟接下来这个作品，他们应该是台湾这边所见到呃 open source 的设计里面文件文件说明跟那个授权模式是做了最清清楚的。Okay, so uh, following project is about the a document is more complete. 所以它的城市码、它的电路图、它的授权、它的三 D 档案，它全部都公开放在 GitHub 上面。Okay, so so the information about this project is uh open source on the a website. 更重要的是，它的授权是用 CC 0 Okay. 嗯。And the most important is about his uh C is used a CC 零 CC 0 c c 0 c c 0 Yeah. 然后这。然后这件事比较有趣的是用那个 micro bit， 因为大部分人都可能想到用 Arduino、Arduino 或者 Open Source 的一个控制板，可是他们在这次的的设计里面，他们用的是 micro bit 的这东西。那有个考量是说，现在台湾的很多中小学的有关于这种科技教育，大部分都用到 micro bit 这这个这个控制板。Okay, so uh, they just use a DIY micro bit to do for a this project. 所以这两件真的是啊，就、呃、就是目前台湾真的还蛮真的很重要，然后他们非常清楚 open source 该怎么做的团体，他们做出来的。Okay, so these two project is a very important project in Taiwan and is、uh, open source because they realize how to do for open source. 嗯，好，然后再来就是再来是台南的台南的飞飞的呃飞飞飞，真的飞飞的台南飞飞飞台南他们做的。
的。基本上，我们能做的其实都是很简单的一些防疫跟跟消毒的一些装置。Okay, so、uh, this is just a very easy、uh, equipment that to、uh, made from the fab lab Thailand and just、uh, use for the alcohol. 然后比较特别的是说。通常我们 open source 会都会放在 GitHub 上面，或是 s i n g e r u s 上面。可是我们这个案例，他们是放在台湾自己制作的一个呃协作平台，叫做 TechMD 这个平台上面。他们把所有的讨论过程以及他们的程式码或什么都放在这个这个平台上面。And the more interesting is about uh because uh, a lot of open source like uh use is uh put on the s i n g e r u s or the GitHub, but this project is put on the platform is a HackMed, which is made from Taiwan. 嗯，对，没错。然后这个是那个次氯酸消毒剂。Yeah, this is another just、uh, to fight the COVID-19. It's to just like the alcohol, the project. Yeah. 所以这边他们都会把，总之他们都会把他程式码都放在这个 HackMD 的上面。And so they just open source their、uh, project on the HackMD. 然后再来是也是一样，就是消毒的的装置真的比较多人做，只是他们这个又用到这个跟刚才第一一开始看到那个版本不太一样，他用的用的比较多是用镭射切割去做那个盒子的版本。Okay, so this project is about a UV, and this is use a laser cutter to make. 那这些所有档案你都可以在这个链接里面看到。And all the information and the document can use the HackMD just like this link can do for open source. 然后接下来有呃，台湾这边有也有做一些 open source 的呼吸器。Okay, so in Taiwan, there's、uh, also use the open source for the ventilator. 呃，接下来介绍这两件，台湾只有做只有做两件出来，就是台湾的 maker 只有两两组人嘛去做。做出这样两个设计。And、so in Taiwan, there's a two team that making the open source ventilator. 嗯，那有一部分的，其中有一件作品是来自于 MIT 的呼吸开源呼吸器。And one of the project, the resource is just started from the MIT open source of ventilator. 然后一开始他是一个人做，然后透过社群的社群的讨论之后，他找到其他同好一起去把这个这个装置完成。And at the first, the member that you are、uh, doing for the open source、uh, ventilator, and he do by himself. But later, he just join the community and, and to do with、uh, the member in Taiwan that、like, to make for the ventilator. 然后某种程度也是因为台湾的防疫做的比较好，比较好，呃，就是台湾的那个疫情也比较，比较比较什么，比较好。所以呼吸器这个讨论的议题大概，呃。一开始很多人在讨论，可是后来慢慢就就就变得比较少。Okay, so the the issue of the ventilator in Taiwan is a little bit cool down in Taiwan, as is because uh in Taiwan the cases of the COVID nineteen is uh low. So, but it's very important around、uh, around the world. But in Taiwan, because the COVID cases is not a lot, so there's a cool cool down discussion in Taiwan. 所以我们在一开始我们在办那个讲座的时候，在讨论这个时候，其实还是有一些人会来听，可是就是比较讨论是技术上的问题。Yeah. Yeah. So there's a more a technical issue that discuss for this ventilator.、Yeah. 所以这件作品，第一件作品就是 MIT 的，来自 MIT 的开源呼吸器去继续改良的。Mm. So this uh this project is uh just a modified that from the A、open source ventilator that is started from the MIT resource. 然后他自己本身这一呃做这一个专案的发起人叫赵世庆，是赵世庆先生。然后他是用他的下班时间在做这件事情。Okay, so uh the member that started to for this project is uh Su Qingzhao, and he just used uh after his job and he used his free time to make this project. 所以他就是称自己是下班后的 maker. So uh. The maker of、uh, this project, he said, he's the after job、uh, maker. 然后再来就是这件作品，就是王根春先生做的呼吸器。Okay, and another this is a, another project about the open source of ventilator in Taiwan. Yeah, it's、uh, Gen Chun Huang. 然后他他这件作品比较特别，是说，呃，上一件作品都大量用到三 D 列印，可是他这件作品的时候。啊，尽尽可能把三 D 列印的部分降降到最低。And、uh, this project is more special, that's it, because uh 
the first one, uh, use a 3D printer is like use the 3D printer to print all the things. But uh, in this project, like use other the simple uh, element that can very easy to detect to make this ventilator. 他在做這件事情是為了讓他的這個窗子可以快速的被被複製被製造。Yeah, so at least uh, open source ventilator, uh, you can see the structure is used the uh, tube, is used a tube. So the reason why to use a tube is because it is more easily to accept, separate or other country can very easily to make because uh, they just use a very simple uh, tube that they can make this uh, open source ventilator. 然後他接下來近期還有跟他討論他是說接下來他會用了Raspberry Pi的方式去更精準的控制那個氣流量 OK, and uh, the maker uh, of this project, uh, he said he will use a Raspberry Pi to control uh, the fluid about this uh, ventilator 那他這個作品一樣可以在那個GitHub上面可以找到他的這個專案 And this project also can uh, find from the GitHub and the open source to it to the world.那他這個授權比較特別是,因為他本身是軟體工程師,然後又是非常熱愛open source的,所以他的授權模式不是創新,不是CC而是GPL。Okay, so uh, he used the GPL to do for the open source because uh, he's uh, the software engineer.那大大致上就是這幾件作品會在我們我這一次主持的論壇裡面會同步的展出這些這些作品。Okay, and uh, all these projects uh, is a very uh, in Taiwan is now is very uh, can show, and there is a symposium that uh, Hongqi will hold in this Saturday, mm -hmm. and he will show show all these projects uh, in the symposium to Taiwan's member. Then,我这到最后呃到最这部分就做个做个小结，就是有关于这种呃开源计划的扩散问题在台湾，就是。最容易遇到的問題,第一個就是醫療法規。Okay, so some there are some issue about this uh, open source uh, some medical supply, there's some issue about uh, these cases. The first one is a regulation about the medical medical, medical regulation. 我我相信這個問題也是全世界的maker或是 open source 計劃都一定會面臨的問題。and uh, he thinks that the uh, uh, regulation uh, issue is all the maker around the world like making the make medical supplies that will meet a, a very main question. And the second one is about the document that for making the project because some document is not very complete or some didn't have a very uh, whole part project. Another issue about this project is about the translation because uh, there's a lot of document is using the uh, Chinese to do, but uh, we want to share our document to the world, so they need a translation team that to uh, translate our language uh, to the English version. Yeah. 然後另外是說我們在那個台灣的開源醫療社團裡面我們我自己也發現一件事情就是為什麼台灣做了那麼多那麼多 所以我我相信有些人看到這個相關計劃的時候,想要再再製的時候沒有看到受選說明,他們就不會去採用這樣的計劃再再次擴散出去. Yeah, so the the last uh, issue is about the creative commons uh, because there is some a uh, lack about the understand about the creative commons. So it's a very difficult for a lot of people to use this open source design to do. So the CC uh Understand how to use a CC code is a very important issue. So, basically,这四个问题大概是我这半年来在看这些相关的文件,开源计划,我觉得自己累积出来的一个新的。所以这个也是自己也想要在想办法说,在台湾国内有没有办法让这些东西变成一个文件制作,英文说版本说明跟授权
就是大家的尝试。Yeah. So because at least for an、uh, issue, there's a not a lot of people understand. So the first is a regulation, a、uh, medical regulation issue,、uh, and the second is about making a document. The third is the language,、uh, the version translation issue, and the first is about the Creative Commons about a CC issue. These four issue is the main.、Uh, Question and the main problem that when we are doing the open source、uh, medical supply that we meet,、mm -hmm. and I think that it needed to more discussion around the world and in Taiwan's community. 嗯，那基本上我今天想要跟大家分分享的就大概就是这些部分，然后特别是最后一个问题，我不知道其他你们对这个问题有什么想法或是建议的。Okay, so this is today's Honky sharing, and the last question about the creative comment is the main issue that Honky want to discuss around the world and the Asia connection. Thank you, everyone. 谢谢，谢谢各位。Thank you. Thank you. 谢谢。谢谢。Thank you, Honky.、Uh, Danny, do you know who goes next? You're muted. Okay, I think the second one will be Japan.、Uh, Taket, is okay for you to sharing about the experience about the Japan? Thank you. As well、okay. done. Can you see my screen? Yes. Can I start? Yeah.、Uh, hi, my name is Take from Japan. I'm、uh, organizing the Fab Lab Hamamatsu in Japan. Can I start? Yeah. Today. Uh. Yeah. Honky already talked about the. Uh, a lot of、uh, open source projects, so I will show, I will show you some Japanese、uh, nice project. What happened in the COVID nineteen? So, so a lot of three D models of face shield、uh, happened in Japan.、Uh, mainly, the, those are happened in、uh, university or、uh, fab labs, guys. And I will show you only three projects. Uh, one is a Pitatku 3D print mask.、Uh, this is a、uh, 3D models、uh, developed by the student of master degrees.、Uh, so、uh, did a lot of makers 3D printed these masks in the、uh, using the 3D printers. So this model is so cool. So he is keeping developing these models.、Uh, Many times, so this is so comfortable mask. So try it. So next, I will show you the face shield models、uh, called Doyo models. This model is、uh, developed by the、uh, Mr. Doyo,、uh, who is associate professor in Kanagawa University. And、uh, after he uploaded on the GitHub. Uh, some other local factory try to make the face shield、uh, by making the metal mold.、Uh, now uh, they made、uh, they produce two hundred sixty thousand face shields. Now that is very famous three D models in Japan. And、uh, one more project is a document website. Uh, called the Fab Save Hub. So this、uh, document is、uh, produced by the Keio University, and、uh, they are showing, explaining how can we sterilize the face shields and the three D models, and、uh, how can what should I mention about、uh, when what should I mention when we take the three D models. Uh, a PPE into the hospitals, so many of makers are beginners of medical. So this document is very useful for them. At last,、uh, I wanna just、uh, show you my stories、uh, in, in Hamamatsu. So I started to produce the face shield 
uh, by starting the one message from Danis. So, so this is the message. And after that, he, he sent me the 3D models. So I tried to print it and uh, took the models into the nearby dentist. And uh, he gave me some uh, feedbacks. So after that, I fixed the models and uh, edited some holes and uh, produced them and bring them to nearby big hospital. And uh, so that was the start point. After that, so around the May, uh, we passed the peak, first peak of the COVID-19, but we do uh, a lot of jobs. And uh, I when uh, I try to talk with uh, nearby NPO groups, uh, they are they are work they are working for a visually impaired person groups, and uh, they also lose uh, jobs. So in general, they are making small staffs for souvenirs or some pro products, but uh, they do the jobs. So I try to talk with them and uh, I bring, I took two Prusa 3D printer there to them. And uh, we started to produce the uh, face shield. Now we, we are producing the, uh, there, yes, uh, they, are, they cannot see at all, but uh, they can produce the uh, face shield and uh, they can use the 3D printer by clicking. Uh, yeah, now we are pro try to producing the uh, face shield with them. And uh, they, are, they are getting income by selling the face shield. Yeah, these are my stories about the COVID-19. Thank you so much. Okay, and the next one will be the uh, Philippine. Okay, it's a uh, uh, Philippine sharing. You can share your screen. Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you see it? Okay. Okay. So, hello everyone. Good evening. So, I'm here in the Philippines. So. Um, I'm going to present um, some initiatives of our Fab Lab here in the Philippines, as well as Fab Lab Bohol. So how could I miss this one? Wait. Uh, sorry. Wait a moment. I have to change. So by the way, I'm Jerome. So I'm the manager of Habla Bohol. I'm working also in Bohol Island State University as university instructor. I'm also an industrial designer. So here, uh, this is Habla Bohol. It is a consortium brand for local empowerment. It is a collaboration program between four government agencies. We have the Bohol Island State University, the Department of Trade uh, and Industry of the Philippines, uh, Japan International Recruiting Agency, and the Department of Science and Technology. And then also a brief uh, info, uh, Fab Lab Hall also is the first Fab Lab in the Philippines. Uh, we established um, last May 2, 2014. So we're still young. Uh, we are six years. And um, when we um, noticed about the COVID-19 last March after um, our uh, government um, announced that we will have this community quarantine, uh, all of the Fab Labs here in the Philippines took the initiative uh, having this new challenge. Uh, or you know, to the new normal thing. So um, the first thing that we've done, uh, um, we of course uh, do the product development process. Uh, we conduct virus of prototyping of what are the needs at the moment. And then of course, for expert evaluation, we took for um, doctors uh, for uh, checking and some um, you know, recommendations. And then we proceed with uh, product testing and then we proceed with digital fabrication. So the first project that we've done in Fab Labohol is we build uh, those face shields 
um, using our laser cutter and other machines and 3D printers as well. So um, this is the first uh, project that we've done, uh, knowing that at that time, um, th we have a problem with the log our logistics as well as uh, with our supply uh, since it was, um, uh, you know, lockdown, I mean, quarantine, we're in, in quarantine. So we build uh, face shields first uh, because it was the need at the moment of our people. And then um, luckily uh, we in Palo Bol alone, uh, we were able to build um, 4,229 face shields to the entire province of Bohol. And by the way, uh, Bohol is just a small province in the country of the Philippines. And then we were able to provide those facials for free to our rural health units, uh, to our local hospitals, and to our uh, other laboratories and testing labs. And then it was for free. Now it was sponsored by the diff different uh, government agency from DDI, um, from BISU, and other uh, private sectors as well. And uh, aside from that, uh, we also have the concern from doctor that um, while they are using face masks, uh, they have um, you know, discomfort from their air. So what we've done is uh, we 3D printed an adjustable face uh, mask buckles that could help, you know, uh, to give comfort to your ear while, while using the face mask um, for the entire day because in our country, uh, wearing face masks is a mandatory. And we also build some um, swab booth. Uh, so uh, using our CNC laser cutter, so those swab boots are, um, we donated it to the uh, Department of Health. It was also sponsored by uh, uh, private uh, uh, agencies like uh, the Bohol Warriors team and other from, of course, the school and then the DTI and the USP. So um, we also build an alternative. Aside from swab boots, we also build a swab panel. Uh, it, uh, we build this one because um, we also have a, a lot of islets here in the province. And it's, uh, it's not good if you're gonna bring the swab boot because it's quite uh, big and heavy. So we create an alternative. Uh, we created this swab panel. And aside from that, we also build um, swab chaos. Uh, it's a small version of swab boot, but it's yeah, handy. And also um, we build some aerosol bags uh, using our laser cutter. Uh, this would be for um, the hospitals that we've been working. And then, um, we also work with uh, 3D printing. Uh, we 3D printed some face masks. Uh, my friend from Japan uh, sent me some file and then we just modify a little. So we try to 3D print face masks as well using our 3D printer. And then um, based from uh, um, the request of our um, local hospitals, they want also to have um, a bulb cover of their 3, uh, 3M6200 uh, respiratory mask. So we 3D printed using our 3D printer as well. So we give it to them and then some sort of uh, small project like, you know, um, bag hoop for while well, taking your groceries in the market. And then we also have actually future project with the DOST and DTI and then the BISU, uh, the state universities. So sooner um, our next project will be creating a hand washing uh, station. Uh, it would be like, you know, auto, mm, automated um, hand washing. It will be, we'll be working with, um, different um, motion sensors uh, you know you have to you can just wash your hands in just sen through sensors and then yeah applying technology as well so it will be we'll be using a water barrel and then we'll be working that soon so just follow our fan page in Pablo Bohol for more updates about this project soon and then by the way in the Philippines we have 22 fab labs and all of our fab labs in the Philippines are actually uh, taking initiatives of um, you know responding the this COVID-19 so a lot of time a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of um um fab labs are actually working to you know for this one project and in fact um what we've done so far um we have 83,339 facials for the entire fab lab Philippines uh 253 aerosol bags 21 disinfectant stations a thousand plus uh, PPE suits and gowns, and then 60,000 of face masks. So it's a work from uh, our network here in Pablo Philippines. Um, of course, with our cooperating agency, we work together with them. And then, yeah, and around 30 Fab Labs and makerspaces working together um, to respond um, and act or act for this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And this is a good thing now because like uh, the Philippine network are actually working together for 
this project. And I just want to highlight some projects um, from other fab labs in the Philippines. This is, uh, uh, yeah. So we have here from Fab Lab UP Cebu. So uh, they are also making 3D printed snorkel uh, valve adapter. And also they build a uh, non-woven fabric PPE suits and face shields. We also have from CPU Tuburan, uh, uh, they also 3D printed ventilators covers and then food operation operated station. And also um, we have here from Negros, uh, Fab Lab Negros, uh, they build an automatic hand sprayer. And we have also from Iloco Science and Technology. Um, they, they build a UVC room sanitizer. It for, you know, it has a human induction sensor that will, you know, and also they build UVC back sanitizer, doctor um, consultation bags and other um, table top specimen collection thing. Um, we also have here from Pablo BUP uh, College of Fine Arts, they 3D printed um, retinoscope shield and from Fab Lab Caraga, uh, they were able to build a sanitary tent with uh, automation. Um, and then it has a misting with a vacuum machine and a HEPA filter. So yeah, so also uh, aside from medical, we have also, of course, with the education side. So other Fab Lab also are working together like Lika Fab Lab, um, Fab Lab Santiago and Fab Lab Ilocos region. They have this uh, introduction uh, to 3D modeling using. It will be an online uh, class or maybe online um, webinar thing. And also in Fab Lab or in our, uh, in our lab, we have this Fab Lab class on um, YouTube where we introduce machine, how to use machine so that maybe in, when uh, the lab is open for public, they can now use the lab uh, after they learn it online. So yeah, so thank you so much for listening and we heal as one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's very great. Okay, and uh, the next one is uh, Afghanistan. Afghanistan. <laughs> uh, uh, uh is your time for your sharing. And yeah, it's very important OSMS member. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone, my name is Nasreen Ansari. Um, I, my background is healthcare administration. Uh, my experience is in uh, quality improvement, patient safety, process improvement, and performance improvement. Um, a few months ago, I, um, uh, you know, opened up a social media uh, page for Afghanistan. I reside actually in Colorado, USA, and so. I coordinate the work for Afghanistan's open source medical supplies. Um, I'm a little embarrassed that I have a different report than the rest of you, um, just because um, the situation in Afghanistan, uh, as you're probably aware, is uh, completely different than you know uh, most of you here. Um, with over 40 years of war and occupation, um, you know the situation is sad on the ground because we don't have um, the resource capabilities and the manufacturing capabilities that the rest of you do. So I applaud you on the work that you have done. Uh, very, uh, you know, impressing. Um, unfortunately, my job, like I said, is to, in, to gather and coordinate help for Afghanistan. And since the past few months, I've uh, created this social media platform. Um, I, uh, you know, fundraised uh, by myself before I joined International Orphanage Care, which I operate as the director of um, this cause under uh, IOC. Um, so before I did that, I, uh, you know, I had messages from physicians in Afghanistan and pleading for uh, PPE. And so I had a fundraiser of over 6,500 where I provided them with, um, you know, uh, what was it? Um, isolation suits uh, and, and PP kits and pulse oximeters, oxygen balloons, and, uh, you know, a few other knickknacks. Um, so that, you know, w went really well. Um, and of course, with a country of uh, about 35 million people, that is uh, not even a drop in the bucket. Um, you know, I was fortunate to, to be connected to Danny, um, who is <laughs> Afghanistan's hero, um, and he has offered to, to, um, to help Afghanistan and uh, provide uh, his first shipment of, of face shields has already gone. 
um, in, uh, in the works. So hopefully they'll receive it sometime soon. Um, he's offered to, to give us some 3D printers, um, open source ventilators, um, and uh, adjustable face masks and um, a few um, open source ventilators. Um, so here now with the situation, what I've been doing is, is I've gathered a team of um, international technical experts because we have an oxygen solution, an oxygen problem in Afghanistan. Um, patients were asked to provide their own oxygen and balloons, uh, you know, as they came in and entered the hospital. Um, price of oxygen just skyrocketed um, and oxygen balloons and um, just a, um, you know, <laughs> a normal person could not afford to, to bring their oxygen um, just because of the price gouging. And, uh, you know, we have as a result, a patient mortality increased. So what I've done is uh, I've gathered, uh, you know, with the help of my parent group, open source medical supplies and um, Guy Cavalcante's um, staff. Um, you know, I'm incredibly fortunate to be, um, you know, in that uh, part of the, uh, the group uh, for Afghanistan for open source. And uh, was able to gather this team to work on a solution for oxygen. Um, and uh, create, uh, you know, uh, open source oxygen con uh, concentrators. Um, so we just had a meeting with, for that. Um, uh, you know, Microsoft uh, employees that's trying to help us in that realm and uh, see if we can um, basically establish a, create a prototype uh, in Afghanistan. But the problem is we need funding. <laughs> so there's a proven technology in, in Turkey um, so I've talked to our um, Minister of Public Health, and I said, will open source uh, solution be acceptable to you um, and the government? And he's welcomed the idea. He said, we can do both the idea of open source uh, concentrators, as well as the proven technology. Um, but the problem is, uh, how are we going to fund this and, and uh, this project? Um, so, um, the other thing is that um, Mount Sinai has been, you know, incredible, uh, incredibly kind to, to us, and they have offered to give us some BiPAP machines um, because of this, uh, you know, problem with uh, uh, patients' uh, mortality rates. So, um, and but the problem is we need the the money to about twenty five thousand dollars to be able to uh, purchase the gadgets that are needed to, for these machines in order to, to save lives. Um, so that's another that's a, a project that's in the works. Um, um, I've got this maker that I made the PP kits uh, first with, and um, they have you know the manpower on the ground. Uh, they have the sewing machines, but lack of fun funding again. Um, so like I said, I apologize, I'm giving you a different story than what you guys have presented here, but I wanted to give you what the reality is on the ground. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd like to be able to raise anywhere between 100,000 to 200,000 um, to be able to provide our hospitals and our doctors um, for uh, with these PPE kits. Um, some provinces don't even have them. Um, the other thing I wanted to, um, you know, kindly mention to Norella what Fab Lab Foundation can do in establishing our first uh, Fab Lab in Afghanistan. Um, I would like to, um, so I'm working on sustainable uh, solutions uh, for Afghanistan to turn things around so that we're not in need of help constantly. So if we get the 3D printer from Taiwan or you know, if any of <laughs> you, uh, anyone else would like to chip in, um, you know, I'll, I can provide you my email address um, and um, you know, please do contact me to see what you guys can do. Um, don't feel obliged, but it would be greatly appreciated. Um, so these are some of the projects you know, that I'm trying to get off the ground. Um, again, uh, funding is an issue, um, but I'm, you know, pleading to others that if they can help, um, you know, we greatly appreciate it. Um, like I said, with a country with over 40 years of war and occupation and um, terrorist attacks by the Taliban, 
Um, you know, there's uh, people are in dire need of uh, PPE and uh, medical equipment. Um, so uh, that's where my story ends. And <laughs> hopefully we can accomplish, uh, you know, great things uh, with the help of Taiwan and others. And I have a better story, some, you know, uh, to tell you in a few months. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the uh, Afghanistan sharing. And before the next speaker, I think that I want to share a video that uh, we, ju we just uh, do uh, last week. Uh, because uh, at the first, uh, we just uh, make a lot of uh, PPE and the facial in Taiwan. But in Taiwan now, the cases is okay. So uh, we are close to uh, zero cases in Taiwan. So we have the ability to uh, support other countries. So we just have a project that to ship in uh, the PPE to other country. And I think that is a very, the important and the concept about the digital fabrication because uh, at the first we can ship the PPE to other country, but the next step, the second stage is to set up maybe the fab lab system or the fabrication system in other country and help them to uh, make the uh, facial by themselves. I think that will be the next step that we can help other country. So now I'm going to share is a video that we are uh, do the last last day. And this is also the story that uh, in Taiwan, there's a 3D printer community that they printing the facial and they come up a new idea about the continuous printing. They can keep printing, printing, printing the uh, facial again and again. So just uh, give me two, uh, one minute for the sharing. Okay. Uh, okay, can you share my, uh, can you see my screen? Okay, so this is the st story that we are doing. So we have a connection and in the OSMS and around the world, and we are discussing a lot of issues. And you can see this is a continuous 3D printer technology that in Taiwan, that, that is because the facial, that we're thinking about how to keep printing, printing, and printing. So there is a maker movement in Taiwan that we want to print a lot of facial and to help out the country. Okay, so uh, I can share the link and in the YouTube and everyone can see this project. You can just find this uh, video on the YouTube and due to the Zoom is not very smooth. So I think I just very quickly to share this uh, video. And where I think that is uh, one of the things that we're thinking of how to help other country and what is a maker to do and how to make her connect with the open source medical supply and the fab lab system together. And what we can make more and we can change the world. So uh, we are happy to, uh, the next speaker is uh, from the USA, Joe. So he will, uh, he's a very special speaker because I just uh, uh, want more speaker to join our discussion and Joe just uh, messaged me. And uh, let's see that what he want to share about the uh, experience in USA. Okay, it's your time. All right, well, thank you so much. This is quite an honor. You don't know how much Taiwan's respect and appreciation and admiration people and just common people in the United States are now, I mean, we're, I've got a friend that grew up there. His father was an educator and moved to the United States and, uh, he, but he still goes back and forth and he's been telling me insights. I mean, the fact that you got 24 million people and you only have had uh, less than a, a couple of hundred uh, deaths from this is incredible. Uh, and, and so I, when you put this out, I know you broke some rules by having an American come in and speak. And I, I appreciate the opportunity to contribute here and to, uh, to, because I don't know if you saw the movie Independence Day, but the president in that movie talked about well, they, were, they were being attacked by aliens and the aliens were gonna conquer the world. Well, it took every citizen to fight to keep themselves alive. 
and that's what we're doing now. We're doing this through the sharing and the and the Fab Foundation. What you have done and setting up the infrastructure is I I admire it. I try to support it. I try to uh, fan the flames as much as I can to keep us going. Uh, but we're dealing with a lot of mixed messages. We're dealing with a lot of frustrations here in the United States. I mean, I'm normally on the road, okay? I'm normally, I was put in, uh, I've only spent uh, three tanks of gas in the last four months, uh, which is th uh, 1,200 miles. Normally, I do 1,000 miles a week. So uh, it's incredible the amount of uh, uh I feel stir crazy, but it's been great to be on these Zoom calls and coordinating and saving maker spaces. We've got maker spaces because they have uh, lost their membership revenues. They can't do uh, the uh, maker fairs. Uh, they uh, having to close down. Uh, we've had some literally shut down and could, won't be in operations. And these were great maker spaces. So what I have done, uh, and you're welcome. Every one of you and everybody tuning in, Wednesday nights, I host a, a relaunch post-COVID call. I ought to not call it post-COVID because I don't think we're going to get out of COVID, but that's what we started off with. Anyway, it's we've been doing this now for 17 weeks, and we did our last one last night, and I know a lot of people that uh, were in last night's call are going to be a part of today's session. They're going to be viewing this. So we got people from all over the world looking into this session today and you've done a great job everybody and i applaud what's going on in japan and and china and uh, philippines i can't believe you got 22 uh, fab labs in uh, the philippines that's incredible uh so uh and in china i'm wearing one of your inventions here today i love this thing i don't know if you've seen this but uh, this is the coolest gadget uh have y'all ever seen these have you used these this is incredible. You talk about a hot day. I just walk around with my own uh, air conditioning system and it gets charged up by your, uh, by your cell phone charge. So uh, this came out of China. This came out of the Shenzhen province. So this is incredible that what we can do to work together uh, it took me a long time to get this, but boy, I use it every day. I mean, it's sticky out here. It's hundred percent humidity and, uh, to have this available, it keeps me going. So that's why I love what we're doing here. It's keeping us going. We're keeping the, uh, uh, we're keeping our, our ideas. We're keeping our, our, our programs. We're keeping things going, but we got to get past idiots out there who are thinking it's their constitutional right to harm others. And so I wrote a song. I want to play this for you real quick. So can I ask a favor of you? Can I ask a fa can I ask a can I ask a favor? So don't worry, it's not that big a task. I just got a favor to ask. Can you put on your dang mask? Can you put on your dang mask? <laughs> Just put on your dang mask. We can't be independent. We got, it's not your constitutional right to hurt other people. It's your constitutional right to protect other people. So put on your dang mask. And I've been trying to get it to make it fun to get, we're getting ready to open up the schools, which is getting ready to poison a whole bunch of people. So we got to protect ourselves. And if you make it fun, people were more likely to wear it. This came from New Zealand. This is a New Zealand print. And isn't this fun? I mean, this is the cleverest thing. So if we make it fun, people are more likely to wear it. And they're talking about how are they going to stockpile all the schools with all the masks? Well, why did they? Why do we have to stockpile them? Why don't we set up fab labs? Why don't we set up maker spaces in each of the schools and teach them how to make their own masks? and teach them how to make it themselves. That's what I think we need to do. Um, and so if they do that, they're learning transferable skill sets that they can use in their career path. They're learning how to self-sustain themselves. If you give it to them, they won't appreciate it. They'll probably throw it away. And they're telling them they have to wear a mask so they're gonna rebel against it. So if we get them to make their own and come up with their own designs, 
they might come up with some better innovations that we hadn't even thought about. I'm helping a young lady up in New York City build uh, animal masks. She's actually figured out that the snouts that the uh, that animals have, like a fox, that extra room up there allows more air to get in. It allows more uh, filters to be in there, and and uh, it's very comfortable. So we got people experimenting with different designs and, and adding some fashion to it and making it fun. Uh, and we've got to, again, we can't just use material, all the shortages and all the PP, uh, PPG materials, PTG and all this stuff that we've got uh, uh, shortages of. We got to figure out how to take some of the stuff out of the landfill. Believe it or not, this sock was made from Flint, Michigan water bottles. I don't know if you know what happened in Flint, Michigan, but Flint, Michigan, they had a big problem with the lead and all the other water supply getting contaminated. So the, uh, so the locals didn't trust the government because they've been lied to so many times. So they sent them water bottles and they sent them 22 million water bottles. Well, I was at an engineering conference in Washington and these environmental engineers were talking about the solutions causing a huge problem. 22 million water bottles were all over the place. They were in the ditches, they were in the all everywhere. They were scattered because they, they didn't have a central way of collecting the 22 million water bottles. So, so we uh, are uh, trying our best to try to get more people to think about how to take trash and turn it into treasure. This is what the, what they did was I called the CEO of a company called Unify and they uh, sent a machine called a grinder up to Flint, Michigan and the sanitation department uh, put these in these machines, all the water bottles in the machines, it ground them up into plastic pellets and then it turned them into um, uh, into thread, they actually they put them on a train. They sent them down to North Carolina, which we have a huge uh, infrastructure of textiles here. We have lots and lots of major textile corporations. So they they put it in the thread, and now they make shirts and socks. This has one water bottle in it. Uh, they've got T-shirts that have seven uh, water bottles in it. So if we can use your geniuses and all these things, get more people inspired to think about doing that. That would be great because I'm frustrated because I can't do what I normally do. I got to show you. I go around the world and try to get kids excited about working with tools and listen to me. It ain't easy because they can play with this. Everybody's so enamored with looking at their phone that they don't focus on regular tools and they haven't mastered. So I create, I was like, how do you get more kids excited about working with tools? Again, my generation's walking out the door. You can see I'm, I'm getting ready to, uh, to get going here. But I want to show you this real quick. I know my time is up, but I want to show you this. This is the uh, Thorminator. It's a 50-pound hammer. I don't know if you can see that too well. But it's, uh, I've taken some more 16,000 people to pick that up. And uh, you're getting them to think about technology in a different way. I want to thank everybody and I, I applaud you for what you do. This is incredible conversation and I'll look forward to contributing for it further. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks for just a funny uh, discussion. And I think that is there any question that uh, a panel speaker want to ask or want to discuss? Is there any question? Or I'm very interested about the Philippines that uh, can I ask about your judgment? Uh, Jerm, uh, what is the issue and what is a project and what is the funding that in the fab your connection? Because you do a very uh, Im important and very great job. And where is the funding that in the Philippines to support you to do this PPE or this project? Mm. Okay, so um, the good thing here in our um, country, uh, here in Bohol specifically, is that our government agencies are actually supporting us, like uh, the Department of Trade and Industry, uh, other agencies, and even the Bohol Island State University, the state university in our uh, country, because uh, actually they are uh, very supportive. Like um, they find a way to find a fund to support with our you know projects in the lab, as well as the community. I mean the ecosystem. Like for example, in our case, in our Bohol ecosystem community, uh, people are actually um you know. 
uh, sending materials to our lab because we posted it in our social media that we need more materials. Um, we need this one so that we could help this RHU or rural health units that could not buy because, you know, um, procurement problem. But um, people are actually responding. Uh, our users, our makers are actually volunteering themselves to work with us in Pablog. Uh, every day before like uh, and then also people are also sending us material from all over the province and that's a good thing because um during this time of pandemic people are actually working together helping each other to fight this and it's a good thing like um in in Bohol alone itself is like in the Tagbilaran city just a while ago um we just we only have one uh case uh in um in COVID-19 and then the rest are already recovered and most of our, uh, you know, uh, most of our positive, most of the positive um, individuals who, uh, who have this COVID-19 are not locals. I mean, like they are from other provinces or other uh, uh, places of, of the country. Like uh, we call them like LSI, um, local uh, stranded individuals. So when they come in the city or in the province, we make sure uh, that all of those are being, uh, you know, isolate or quarantine so that there will be no local transmission. And still at, at the moment, still at the moment, the government itself, especially this coming uh, weeks, will be working with the Department of Science and Technology. And they told us that they are going to fund for the prototyping. And then we will be working with our research and extension office in, um, in Bohol Island State University because um, they also um, uh, mentioned that they are going also to find a fund because the government, I mean, the government of the Philippines is actually trying its best to work together or like to fund a project for Fab Lab so that we can continue helping our, you know, frontliners and individuals to, you know, to stop this uh, pandemic. Another I want to uh, ask about the connection about the OSMS and the Fab Lab connection together, because I think that some places have some uh, OSMS organization and some have a Fab connection. And I, the first is I want to ask about the Philippines and another is ask about the Japan. What is the open source medical supply connection and the Fab Lab connection work together or is it possible to cooperate in the future? Yeah, uh, Philippine first. Okay, so uh, in our case with um, you know um, medical practitioners, um, the good thing also is like um, our local hospitals in in the province of Bohol, we only have few hospitals because we are not a big like we are just small province or island. And then actually, our the good thing is like most of the doctors, uh, I mean, are actually going to Fab Lab like visiting us. Um, and then before before uh, before they were they were isolated, uh, before we are working with them so that we can actually check if um, the product itself is safe because of course safety will be our priority and also other fab labs are working together are working together. I mean like if we have projects here we share it to our uh, group chats and then we you know work we do prototype and then also a lot of um, a lot of um, my friends like uh, especially for example like in japan um they send me some file of their face masks and other facials and then like open source design so that we can you know try to try to work with our um, machine in pablo bohol and that's a good thing because like um people are i mean like all of those on uh, network are actually uh trying uh, i mean they're trying to help um maker spaces like our fablabs in the country or in, i mean in the philippines so um, yeah and how about Taket? <laughs> what uh, is the OSMS or open source medical supply and the connection about the Fab Lab connection in uh, Japan? You want to share something? Yeah, uh, we, we have a language program <laughs> in Japan. So it, it, most of Japanese uh, don't uh, communicate with uh, English uh, language peoples. So it's a one of the programs. So, but uh, yeah, we, we needed to connect connect to the gro groups, uh, uh, the global groups. Uh, yeah, what, what can I do? But uh, yeah, I needed to open the Japanese communities, <laughs> connect to the global. Okay. Uh, Honky, do you have some questions? 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about the Nazari from the Afghanistan? Uh, what uh, is uh, can is there an other country or the uh, fab lab around the Afghanistan uh, connect with you to help the Afghanistan? Because I think there's still a lot of uh, fab lab in the uh, in the middle of the Asia, right? In some other country in Abor. Yeah, there, there, there are some in Pakistan, and uh, let me see if I'm muted. No, I'm not. And um, so there, there's some in Afghanistan. Sorry, in Pakistan and India, um, and we have none in Afghanistan. So that's why I was asking kindly Narala to see if um, Fab Lab Foundation can help us establish our first Fab Lab in Afghanistan. I think that would take care of some of the issues, um, and it would be wonderful. So. Uh, like I said, I applaud every one of you and thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm sorry that I had a different report <laughs> than, than the rest of you, but um, you know, it's all about coming together and um, you know, working towards a common cause, especially during this COVID time. So I appreciate everyone. Thank you. So back to uh, Nora, is there any question we want to discuss with the panel speaker? <laughs> From um, the well, uh, we don't have currently like questions. We have a lot of comments on our YouTube channel, but I would say that like I've seen like a lot of diversity in between like the mapping, the design, uh, the language barriers, especially I think it's something that we haven't talked about uh, in, in the last couple of sessions that we have had. And it's super important. Uh, to to take this into consideration for the future what are your future plans i know like we mostly we try to talk in english because i think it's like the common language that we all have but what is what has been like the difficulties that you have been facing on this like documentation and language barriers i don't know if you have any examples experience something about the, around those lines whoever wants to respond it's fine so uh, it's about the translation issue, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's more of like, uh, we know like there's a lot of design going on. There's a lot of solutions. I have seen incredible solutions by Jonki that show a bunch of different things, Masato as well, Jerome as well. Like I'm so impressed to see how many designs and solutions have come up. I, I think you're in a different face than the rest of the world, I would say. Like you have come with things that like I've never imagined. Uh, and that's amazing. But how do we actually, with all this situation with Creative Commons and open source and sharing documentation and actually like having that design, like transfer knowledge because we're not transferring materials, but transferring knowledge. How has that been, uh, like what situations have you faced on that, uh, our area. I don't know if you have shared those designs with someone in US, in South America, in Europe. I have no idea. Like, are you thinking about that? Can that be a possibility? How could you face like those types of scenarios? Yeah, uh, I think that because I joined the uh, OSMS uh, Open Source Medical Supply, just uh, necessarily know about. Uh, actually, there's a translation team. The uh, it's one of the very important in the. Uh, uh, OSMS team, and and, and the mission is to tr translate and to localization that uh, all the connection together. So we are not doing is to uh, translation uh, some project from Taiwan and to open source to uh, to become the document. And I think the last last thing I want to share is about the website about the open source medical supply because I think there is a good map on the. Uh, this uh, website, and I think the future that we can uh, use this platform to discuss together will connect all the that together. So uh, let me share my screen. Can everyone see my screen? So yeah, because at first I just uh, connect with the uh, Fab Academy and uh, Fab System, and now we are connect with the Open Source Medical Supply. So this is the website. Everyone can just. Uh, use the open source medical supply on the Google and to get into this website. And you can see there's uh, three uh, parts. The first is a uh, make medical supply. So you can just uh, click the, this part and then you can, there's a lot of library in this uh, project. So you can see there's a lot of uh, medical supply uh, on this 
on this website so you can download it and to go to the fab lab and to just uh, print it and to support other people and so there's a lot of uh, library and we also can share our experience to uh, this platform and there's a lot of translation team here and i think that is a good platform for the document to col collaboration and another one is about the local response group i think this is another very important map and maybe other is interesting can join this map project okay so you can see this is the around the world for example uh in in us you can see there's a lot of uh information about the hospital and the maker and gather together just for New York. For example, we can quickly to realize uh, which hospital or which area need the supplies and where is the fabrication system uh, near the hospital. And I think that is one of the important parts to do for this. And that is an amazing map. I, I think that uh, we can use in the future and connect all the docs together and to fight the COVID-19 together. Okay, so this is my sharing. <laughs> I think that is very interesting. And uh, I think the time is almost, is there any final question or want to kind of discussion? We wanted to add something, uh, Danny. Uh, so open source medical supplies also works with a nonprofit organization called Translation Commons. And um, I can send you the contact information for Jeanette um, if you're interested, uh, Norella, uh, to yeah. share with folks. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that is, thanks for uh, the uh, survey. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, I, I think, my yeah. pleasure. Translation issue is very important because my yeah. first is the translator in Taiwan and uh, she is uh, in the one of the team of the OSMS International and he find us and to gather the localization together. So at the first, the translator and the maker in Taiwan is different, but we met together and uh, gather together and merged together to become a big team. So that is our experience. And I think maybe around the world and to find a translator or a doctor and for the hospital and the maker and the translator and the documentation to work together. I think that we have a lot of uh, things that we can do and change the world. Yeah, thank you. If I may, I wanted to add one last comment. So in terms of uh, translation, um, I've gathered some physicians inside Afghanistan and abroad to translate the document that was passed on um, from our parent group, Open Source Medical Supplies. And so we're in the process of translating that into both Dari and Pashto, which are the two, uh, um, you know, languages in Afghanistan. Um, but you know, in terms of, of translation, the the open source group also works on the translation of uh, certain things uh, with their own folks in, in their uh, countries. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Nasari. Okay. Thank you. So <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for uh, for joining this session. I think it was incredible to see how many like innovative uh, solutions everyone has come up with in their own regions, like the capacity that they have been like creating in this short amount of time. I think it's wonderful to see how people, even though it's a weird scenario, but basically we have a common topic right now worldwide. Like it's something that we can all talk about, like we are all familiar with in different times but like we have all faced uh, that situation at some point and I think it's it's wonderful to see how a crisis is not being wasted and that's why like we have this hashtag fab does not wait um we we just need to act we need to act in an efficient way we need to act in a in a responsible way we have try, been trying to do that all through this all throughout this month so uh thank you all for joining this session i think it was a wonderful experience so many different experiences i would say but they are like meaningful and that gives us a sense of how we can think uh in the future so thank you all for joining i thought i saw i saw there's a, a wonderful comments in the chat uh that's super nice to see uh, people are engaging people are here people are listening people are willing to help so um, and thank you for all our special guest Joel and his uh, performance and explanation I think it was wonderful to see that incredible story taught in that in that way um, 
And we will have our final session next week uh, on July, I think it's the 23rd. Uh, we will have uh, Middle East finishing up this wonderful uh, sessions of Fab Does Not Wait. And then we will jump in, into FabX Live. So uh, we are also inviting you all to join FabX Live where we will have uh, panels, workshops, activities happening throughout the week. Uh, and we will have a final conclusion about the sessions that we had over the last couple of months. So thank you all. Um, and I hope you can see you again sometime soon. And thanks for joining. Thank, thank you. you. Stay safe, everyone. Let's win. 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 Let's win.